In today's video, I will be presenting part two of my Working with the Court Cards series, in which I cover the energy of the bold and fearless and fiery Knights of the Tarot. Let's do it. If you as a viewer are coming to this video without having previously watched the pages video, working my working with the court cards um, featuring the pages, my part one, I cover a lot of context in that video regarding kind of my intention for this process as well as when I actually get to the cards, how I navigate the courts in general. So I don't think I'm going to repeat myself here. There are timestamps in that pages video for relevant information regarding um, me introducing this series. So uh, I think you could probably find what you need there if I don't talk about it here. This is a viewer requested series and my pages video has been relatively well received, which has been really, really amazing and fun. This is a topic I love discussing and I feel it's highly relevant for a lot of readers, particularly readers who are new to tarot. And I just don't feel that there can be too much information about perspectives on the court cards. This is my perspective and mine alone. I highly recommend going and researching and exploring other perspectives and methods for working with the courts and tarot because there are so, 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 so many. I will use the same three decks that I used in the Pages video, which are the Centennial Borderless uh, Smithwaite published by U.S. Games, the Way Home Tarot, and the Elemental Power Tarot by Melinda Lee Home. Those three decks for me all represent the courts, the energetic aspect of the courts extremely well for me personally as a reader by presenting a, a more traditional deck alongside two more elementally based decks that can kind of give you a chance to uh, compare and contrast systems and just develop an approach that hopefully you resonate with and that works for you. Links to books and decks that I feature in this series and in each video will be included in the description box. I think that's everything <laughs> for the intro for this video. Please remember um, there is other, there's added context in that in the pages video because it was the first video and I kind of front loaded a whole lot of stuff in that one. So uh, please reference that video if you feel inclined to do so. Okay, to the nights. I'm going to begin this portion of the video with the same disclaimer that I gave um, at the beginning of my pages video and that is that I am not a tarot teacher or a professional reader. I currently only read for myself and my perspective is purely based on my own assimilation of the sources and approaches that I have encountered and read and listened to and that resonate with me. And this is purely my own perspective. And as I said in my intro, I highly recommend researching and trying out various approaches and styles for yourself and in hope that you find a way to work with the courts that makes sense and resonates for you. With that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at what I have on my table. I have visually mapped out the knights in the same way that I did the pages where I have all of the knights from one single deck in horizontal rows, top, middle, and bottom. The top being the borderless centennial RWS, the middle row being the way home tarot, and the bottom row being the elemental power tarot. And in each vertical column, is the knight of the respective suit. So on the left uh, vertical column on the far left, all three of the knight of swords are present. Second column from the left, all of the knight of wands. Third column, all of the knight of cups. And the fourth row, all of the knight of coins or pentacles. My purpose for laying the cards out like this is to just kind of give an overview and an examination of how things are flowing within the same deck as well as each knight within its own respective suit between the three different decks. Once again, for deeper context, please reference uh, my part one, my pages video roughly around the six minute mark. That is when I go into detail about how I see the courts in general. 
But one bit of context I will repeat here is that I see the courts as behavior or persona, whether that is me, if I'm reading for myself, if I were reading for another, um, it could be the querent or it could be an external figure either in my own life or in the life of the person uh, for whom I might be giving a reading. So uh, the court cards is behavior is fundamental to how I interpret them. I will also be pulling in the same three books that I used for my part one, the pages video, which are the Marseille Tarot Revealed by Yoav Bendov, WTF is Tarot and How Do I Do It by Bakara Wintner, and Tarot Your Complete Guide by Stephen Bright. And I will be going over the brief summaries of the knights in each one of those. As far as the knights go, I see the knights as being associated with the element of fire which is in line with the resource from uh, the Yoav Bendov book, The Marseille Tarot Revealed, that said that the dynamism and movement is characteristic of the wand suit. And in most decks, not all, but most wands, the suit of wands is associated with the element of fire. The element of air is often associated with the knights, which gives the kings the association with fire. That's pretty in line with a lot of the Golden Dawn based approaches of reading the courts. But um, when I was first learning that, that combination just didn't resonate with me. And it was the Bendov book that really, really made the aspects of the elemental association of the Knights with Fire and the Kings with Air. It really, really stuck for me. On page 242 of the Marseille Tarot revealed by Yoav Bendov, there is a summary of how he perceived the knights, which reads, The knights mounted on horses express dynamism and movement typical of the wan suit. Also, the horse touching their pelvic area can represent the animal forces of desire. The second source, WTF is Tarot and How Do I Do It by Bakara Wintner, describes the knights, or in this case the sons, as outward action in the world. The sons are in a constant state of movement, moderately experienced but still in development, in the adolescent young adult phase, and can be brash or immature. Air element, that's where we disagree, <laughs> connected to the chariot, the two through five cards. And that was on page 104. On page 14 of Tarot, Your Personal Guide by Stephen Bright, there is a brief summary of the knights, which reads, knights can represent adults within the 20 to 35 year old bracket. They suggest movement in a reading because they are generally in pursuit of something. The knight of wands could be chasing excitement, whereas the knight of swords might be seeking information. In all three of those sources, the commonality is that knights represent movement. One main difference between these sources is that of age with WTF is Tarot and How Do I Do It referencing and associating knights with the adolescent young adult phase and Tarot Your Complete Guide associating knights with the early 20s to mid 30s. Uh, once again, as I said in my pages video, I don't associate age or gender with my courts. Courts are modes of behavior for me, regardless of age or gender. Now we'll start breaking down the knights by their respective suit. So in front of you, you see the Knight of Swords represented from each of the three decks, the Borderless Centennial RWS on the left, the Way Home Tarot in the middle, and the Elemental Power Tarot on the right. Elementally, the Knight of Swords for me is the fire of air, because as I discussed before, all knights for me represent the suit of fire. And with the swords, um, present here, we have the element of air represented. So there is a meshing of the two elements of fire and air. If you look at all three of these images, and we go back to the uh, book resources where we found that movement was a commonality um, amongst all of those descriptions, you can really, really see that 
here in the Knight of Swords. If you look at the RWS card on the left, you see that horse in motion in mid run. And if you notice the trees in the background, they almost look like they are blowing in the wind. And the little um, the little fabric accessory, mm -hmm. I don't know what the name of that would be on the on the helmet of the night is also kind of flapping in the breeze. And this figure has their sword drawn up over their head. There is a true element of movement there. In the middle, the Son of Swords from the Way Home Tarot is depicted with a tornado cloud within the silhouette of the figure. And that is a great visual descriptor for me of that flurry of movement and activity within the element of air. For me, that air element is really being supported by the fire element. If you look at the ground, on the car of the card of the RWS, you see that dry kind of barren landscape at the bottom. And then in the elemental power tarot card on the right, that fire, that supporting energy is present at the bottom. And in the way home tarot, that rapid movement, that that um, culmination of activity uh, manifests in the area of the belly of the figure, which for me really represents that metaphor of the fire within the belly. There is just this rapid movement and intense, the intensity of the fire within that more logical, intellectual aspect of the element of air. If we go back to the descriptor of knights being in somewhat of a developing but yet still immature phase. If we think about how that relates to fire, fire is this intense energy that is highly beneficial but can also become absolutely chaotic and out of control if it is not contained or attended to properly. And I really relate the energy of the knights to this where they're t going one step beyond the page energy. The page energy, as I mentioned in my first video, giving that seed energy of the suit and giving it form. The knights are beginning to develop that form, but it's still a bit on the immature side. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a learning process. But if left un unattended or not contained properly, it can get out of hand very quickly. And that's where this, I think, association of knights being somewhat hostile or a bit in your face kind of comes in just because there is that intensity there. But when channeled properly, can be highly effective, influential, and beneficial. A brief summary of the Knight of Swords for me would be intensity of the mind or intensity of mental activity which includes communication i often think of people who work in it as sort of knight of swords energy particularly if they are um, coding just that rapid fire communicative activity and maybe also individuals who work in like customer service or chat support or any anything where there needs to be um, direct and quick communication. I could also see this energy being maybe a uh, public or inspirational speaker, but maybe one who is not overly experienced, but um, really, really communicates with that passion and intensity. Now we'll move on to the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is one of my favorite cards in the tarot, and I always feel bad for this energy because it gets such a bad rap. <laughs> um, the Knight of Wands in more kind of um, traditional approaches of reading is often portrayed as kind of that one night stand or player energy, you know, the love them or le love them and leave them type. And I think that's really, really putting this figure in a very narrow, teeny tiny box. <laughs> if we consider the elemental representation, though, it is kind of easy to see why that might be. So going back to how I see the energy of all of the knights, which is represented by the suit of fire, 
and we have the wand suit which is also fire so the knight of wands is the fire of fire this energy is pure fire pure passion pure intensity and that movement aspect again is extremely prevalent in these three cards in the rws card that horse is rearing on its hind legs its front body is elevated off of the ground it is in the process of moving forward that action there is really really captured and the wand being held by the knight is also elevated over the head in the way home tarot we have this volcano eruption that is just stirring again there's that fire in the belly kind of energy and it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and then it just blows and if you look at the wand and the hand the wand is not touching the hand it's almost as if that energy lifted the wand off of the hand and now it's almost just kind of levitating there if you look at the elemental power tarot on the right you don't see anything but fire you see that elemental representation of fire in the upper left hand corner along with the wand it's fire of fire it's pure fire and again and also the the knights have the helmets and the horses which also to me suggests a need for support and a bit of defense because the helmets protect the head and knights are often portrayed as wearing armor um, especially in older more traditional decks this goes along with the idea of the knights needing a bit of support and in the case of the horses and the helmets um, they're they're getting that little bit of of a boost the Knight of Wands for me can be um, an, an artistic figure who has very much discovered what moves them and they've gone beyond page energy. They're now starting to develop their aesthetic or their style, but it's still not quite refined enough to be considered um, mature or developed. As far as behavior goes, this can be acting purely from the gut, purely at an instinctual level without any rational or logical undertone behind the action. It's just pure gut instinct. In some situations, that can actually be a good thing that can that can save a life if you're just reacting from the body, you're reacting from that gut instinct versus having to stop and think about it. All in all, the Knight of Wands for me is a very aspirational, inspirational, and extremely creative energy. However, if it is not channeled correctly or contained properly, it can be chaotic and destructive in its more shadow presentation. One manifestation of the more shadowy aspect of this energy could be addiction or um, destructive compulsion. And now we get to the Knight of Cups. For me, this is the romantic figure of the tarot. And I think that's actually quite common in um, many, many systems and approaches of reading. If we think about elementally what this figure represents, again, the knights are fire for me and my perspective. And if we think about the suit of cups, water is the element that typically represents the suit of cups. If we consider the energy of the knights as fire and the suit of cups, which is water, then this figure is the fire of water. For me, this is very much an energy of acting from the heart, acting being associated with the fire element and the heart being associated with the water element. This is where we get those declarations of love that maybe kind of come out of nowhere and they're very intense and passionate. We can think of that pot of water that is bubbling on the stove. It's it's the, the feelings that are um, intensified and a bit heated and coming to the surface. The activity is coming to the surface. I was in my late teens, early 20s. I really feel I was, I was quite knight of cups in um, many, many different situations. I was still developing emotions and understanding how, 
how the how those how those feelings worked. It was it was very my early twenties and late teens were very, very Knight of Cups years for me. For me, this is also the embodied behavior of wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're you're expressing feelings uh, confidently, which can be extremely beneficial and helpful and productive. But in the shadow aspect, it can be extremely overbearing and maybe even a bit needy. If we look a bit closer at what we see here on the cards, particularly in the RWS Knight of Cups, is the gaze of the eye. The gaze is looking straight ahead. And this is the aspect of fire for me in this figure that really stands out. It's that confident, looking straight ahead gaze. And in the case of the RWS card, just holding that cup, holding those feelings out. Where in the case of the page, it was a little bit more vulnerable. The knight is feeling a little more confident in their feelings. Even in the elemental power tarot on the right, the helmet is as if it were looking straight ahead. It's it's straight on looking at you. There is, and then along with the fire um, present at the bottom, that supporting fire energy, there is a quiet confidence in this energy for me. If we look at the horse on the RWS card, it is looking down. It's looking down toward the ground and toward the water on the ground. It's a bit more open and receptive. In the case of the Way Home Tarot, the figure is drinking the water or the wine or whatever that liquid is through the mouth. It then goes down into the belly, into the belly. So it's going in and down. And if you look at the figure where that belly area is at, it is this gentle course of streaming that will gradually pick up. And th if we think about the connection with the chariot that the Bakara Wintner book mentioned, we can kind of see a connection there of movement. It's a little bit slower, it's more gradual movement, but it is movement nonetheless. It's that feeling in the belly, that feeling in the gut. We also see that opening in the rock formation and it's extending upward toward the heart center. It's starting in the belly and then that opening in the chest, that opening in the heart, that expression of feeling. For me, this energy is very much that of a singer-songwriter. This can also be a film or stage performer where the process of acting out emotions is prevalent and the the having to be adaptable knights are also very adaptable figures they they can move and change and be spontaneous um, relatively easily bottom line whenever the knight of cups shows up in a reading for me i know that there's something involving the expression of feeling or acting from the heart. A spread position in the context of the reading kind of determine whether that is a help or a hindrance or perhaps just completely neutral. And last but certainly not least, we come to the Knight of Coins or Pentacles. And this knight happens to be my favorite knight. I do love the Knight of Wands as well, just because in a healthy embodiment, that energy is just so fantastic. It's just, it goes out there and gets things done. And I think it's amazing for what it is. But the Knight of Coins for me holds a very special place in my heart. I feel like I'm in this energy quite often. Elementally, if we conceptualize the Knight of Coins, we know Knights, at least from my perspective and the perspective of, of this of this video is that knights are fire. We go to the coins or pentacles, and of course, in most systems and approaches, this is the element of earth. And if there's anything about earth, it is that it is slow. This is a slow, gradual, conservative energy. It takes its time there is an aspect of long term and legacy associated for me with this energy with the energy of coins and of earth this is what i lovingly refer to as the slow burner court card you have that burning energy of the fire because it's a night the fire is still there but it is slow 
this can be the energy of a person who may have started a creative project in their maybe their early 20s or maybe even their teens or maybe even in their childhood and they've spent literal years cultivating this project it has been crafted and considered and developed to the minutia it's very deliberate a perfect example is this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel has been pretty much about two and a half years in the making, but so much of it was just me developing conceptually what I wanted it to be and not actually engaging in any output or putting out any content. This has been a very slow process not so much now that I've started and put videos out this this process has actually gone rather quickly um, as far as that's concerned but the the pre stages you know the 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 pre-existence of my channel was a slow burner creative project if we look at the horse and the RWS card all four hooves are on the ground there is no movement that horse is standing still and consideration is being taken regarding the terrain and the pentacle the coin that the knight is holding is below the face below the head that always has suggested to me that this is a more conservative approach to action this figure is not letting the creative desire go to their head they're they're being deliberate about it they are carefully crafting their endeavor we also see the earthy aspect of the green grass underneath the horse, but if you look carefully, there isn't really any grass present beyond the horse and the figure. So this has always suggested to me, you know, there's consideration that maybe the grass is not greener on the other side and care needs to be taken. In the Way Home Tarot in the middle, you see these slabs of tree. The tree has been cut. The tree has been cut and this is developing into something else. It's no longer a standing tree that's very much associated with the earth element. There has been action taken. The tree is now in pieces and that action is being embodied by the figure. And the figure is carefully cultivating that pentacle or that coin. Action is being taken, but it's intentional and methodical. In the Elemental Power Tarot on the right, we see the symbology of the helmet that represents the knights within all of this earthiness. And it almost looks like there's a bit of an entanglement. There, there's still a vision. There's still that fiery vision of that knight energy, but there's a lot to sort of navigate through before that vision becomes a reality. The fire energy is there. We can see it in the color um, as well as the helmet, but there's so much earth. There's so much of the material and the physical that has to be navigated first. The Knight of Coins can remind me of an, an individual who is a firefighter, but maybe fights wildfires, just containing that fire energy within the boundaries and the confines of the physical. I also think of creators like um, tarot creator Margaret Peterson, who has one of the, in my opinion, most beautiful decks available um, and done in tarot history but it took her 20 years to work through that process and to complete that deck and it was an absolute labor of love um, at least I feel from the perspective of the reader who uses that deck a shadow aspect of this behavior for me can be inaction due to a perceived need for stability and security, which um, the endeavor might jeopardize. That concludes my presentation on how I work with the knights in the tarot. Part three will indeed be how I work with the queens. Part four, the kings. Part three will be up hopefully within a couple of weeks. That's all I have for this video. Until my next one, take care.
and be well.